bug that we thought we never have to worry about called Staph aureus, and there's a multiple resistant Staph aureus, and a child just reported in Texas just died from it. How can that be? Well, unfortunately, MRSA, MRSA as we call it, has actually been around for quite a while. Uh, there are a number of communities, and actually there's a number of communities in Texas, where the proportion of resistant organisms, or MRSA, in the community are over 60%. Um, so this is not a new phenomenon. Uh, not only is it not a new phenomenon, but we also know that, yes, it's in hospitals, but it's, it's more importantly, it's in the community, so that many of the staff that comes into the hospital is actually coming from the community and not a, res a result of it being developed in the hospital itself. So it's a mixture. Um, but the word multiple resistance, what does that mean, resistance? Well, normally in the very beginning, staph was very sensitive to penicillin. It then became resistant to penicillin, and we developed a more sophisticated type of penicillin that would be effective against it. Now we're finding that even those more sophisticated penicillins are not effective, uh, as effective as they were against this particular staph. So it's very, very serious. We do have antibiotics to treat it. They're just not the usual kind. We have to sort of step it up to a more sophisticated type of antibiotic. The concern is that the next step of resistance could be resistant to everything we have and then we're in very deep trouble. So it's a very important worry on the horizon for all of us. But it's been here for a while. This is unfortunately not new. So the way to prevent it would be good cleanliness, washing of the hands, don't share wet towels in gyms and things it, like that? Absolutely. It, the timing of this report is actually an important one, even though the organism has been around for a while. It reinforces the need to be absolutely uh, 100% excellent technique in the hospitals where the professionals are. Hand washing, hand washing, hand washing. Any, anything less than hand washing before and after contact with patients is not acceptable. Uh, if we really do stick to careful hygiene control, keeping surfaces clean, and hand washing, we can prevent the transmission of this organism which is out there. But it needs to be vigorous, it needs to be multi-leveled, reinforced, uh, and everyone has to, uh, has to say that. We now wear a badge here at the Children's Hospital of Maimonides, and the badge says, please ask me if I have cleaned my hands. So everyone is empowered because of this particular badge to say, did, did you clean your hands? Did you wash your hands? It just reminds everyone that that has to be everybody's vigilance to clean your hands. Those alcohol hand wash things, are they okay? They are absolutely okay, and they're very convenient, and they can have dispensers all over the place, and you don't need very much, and they actually make your hands feel pretty good. They, many of them come with things that soften your hands a little bit, uh, and they are very effective as a cleaner, but washing your hands with soap and water is, is also good. So whatever you have, just be compulsive about sticking to the routine. Wash your hands before and after every patient contact. A good practice by a competent physician should be you shouldn't use antibiotics just because someone came in the front door. And if we become more selective, less resistance will be in the community too. Is that true? Absolutely. Obviously, what has probably prompted a lot of the antibiotic resistance is the overuse of antibiotics, both in the communities and even in the hospitals. Uh, too many antibiotics, broad spectrum especially, those are the kind that you know will kill lots of different organisms creates resistance. That's just what happens. The bug will adapt. It'll change its uh, DNA uh, appropriately and become resistant the next time it sees that antibiotic. So the more appropriate we use antibiotics, the less likely the diffuse resistance will occur. Um, and that's just, uh, just should be our over, overarching uh, message. Don't overuse antibiotics. And parents don't demand antibiotics when it looks like it's just a simple viral illness and we'll get better. Don't put your pediatrician or your adult physician, if you're an adult, in a, in a bind. Uh, they will use antibiotics appropriately and insist that they use them appropriately. That makes you as responsible as they. And the flu doesn't respond to antibiotics. So if you have the flu, the best treatment for flu is a lot of liquids, bed rest, but not antibiotics. Is that true? That's absolutely right. Influenza is a viral infection. Uh, it is best treated by prevention. So get your flu shots, and children should be getting their flu shots. They are just coming out now. Um, 
But should you not get your flu shot or get the flu, uh, then in fact antibiotics are not effective uh, because it's a virus. Uh, antibiotic means antibacterial, and therefore you just need lots of fluids and rest and uh, some medicine for your fever if you're having it, and it'll go its course. It'll take five to seven days. You won't feel good, uh, nor will your child, but it will eventually get better.